How exactly do you go about to create a tic-tac-toe game in a Google spreadsheet? How simple is it? It's actually not bad. And what we want to do in these videos is to break this spreadsheet apart so that you understand how this is created. Now, the first question you have to ask is, well, in order to decode the tic-tac-toe game, how did the spreadsheet know when there was a winner? Okay, so let's start with that question. We know that there are eight ways a player can win. Let's say you're player X. If you have three X's here, you win. And that, could be, that can be applied eight times. So let's take a look at those three eight times. You have one, two, three. Here's another set. A third, again, you could have the verticals. So that's, that's already six. And the last two combinations are the diagonals. So if there are X's or O's in any of those eight combinations, we have a winner. So we need to set up a formula within the spreadsheet to indicate when that's the case, when, that we, do, when we do have a winner. And so this is the very simple formula that we use. Now, let's break this apart. It's an if statement, so feel free to check out our tutorial on if functions. And embedded in that if function are and and or functions, which are logical functions. Big picture. If this condition holds true, return a Y in cell E6, or if it's not true, return an N. So what I want the spreadsheet to return is if you have a winner, in this case for cell E6, if these are th three X's, or if these are three O's, I want this to return a Y. In other words, I want the spreadsheet to indicate that there is, in fact, a winner. Okay, so this concept here is applied eight times. It's applied here. One, again, as we pointed out here, the three verticals and the diagonals are reflected in this cell here for this particular diagonal and this cell here for this diagonal. Okay, so how does this work now? If we have B6 equaling to C6, which equals to D6, whenever we have an equal sign, we can only equate two values at a time, uh, not three, so this is why we need the AND statement to link the two. So if these three are equal to another, in other words, B6 is equal to C6, which is equal to D6, and if these cells are equal to X or equal to O, I'd like this cell E6 to return a Y. The reason this OR statement is necessary is we could have three blanks here, and that would return a Y, which we don't want because three blanks will not result in a winner. We need either three X's or three O's. So let's test this out. If we have three X's here, there's a Y that's returned, exactly what we want. Similarly, if there are three O's, a Y also is returned. And as you can see, this can apply in any of the eight combinations, and we should see the corresponding cell return a Y. So in this case here, in this diagonal, if we have three X's, that Y comes up. Similarly, if we have three O's here, again, this Y comes up as well. So that this fo uh, formula here is the basic formula applied across each of these cells, and the purpose of it is to note when we have a winner. Okay, so stay tuned here because in our next video, we're going to dissect this formula here to understand how this box was able to dictate which player won. A nested if function will place one or more if functions within the first to test additional conditions. So in other words, we can increase the flexibility of the if function by including more if functions within the first. We're nesting it. So what I'm going to show you now is the same formula here, but I create spaces so we can visually see how this function works. So let's start here. If 
cell E6, which is here, is Y, then return the text player, followed by D6, which is O, wins. So that's why what we see here is player O wins, because it's reading the first line of our if function. Now the reason we need more if statements, in other words, a nested if function, is this is not the only combination that would result in a winner. Any of these here, if they return a Y, that would mean we have a winner. So let's say in this case, if we test the second condition here with E7, if we have three X's here, then we know that the cell E7 will return a Y, and at that point, this function nested within the first function, this if function here, will indicate if E7 is Y, which it is, then it would show a player plus D7, which is X, wins. So that's why we, again, have the correct result, which is player X wins. And so on and so forth. So we can apply it to each of these conditions here. That way, whenever, it doesn't matter which winning condition or combination, you have already have it expressed within this formula so that the pr appropriate result will come up here. So let's do an, a diagonal example. If we had, in this case, x, 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 again, very appropriately, we have the y coming up here in cell A9. And so what we have here in that last nested if function, we have if A9 is y, which it is, then indicate that player this is a text now, player plus B8, B8 is an X, player X wins. Now the final element of this if function is these two quotation marks which indicate a blank. So if none of these hold true, in other words, if there are no winning combinations, none of these eight combinations hold true, in other words, all these are ends, then return a blank. And so as you see here, we see a blank. So that is it, folks. What you've learned here is you've learned how to understand how to create a tic-tac-toe board game. You have understand the essence, what went into constructing this particular spreadsheet. And just as a quick rehash, the important elements that were used include the if function, and by default we have the nested if function as shown here. You also learned the AND function and the OR function, which all belong in the logical function family. Okay, so feel free, check out those particular videos, get a good grasp, and then use those skills to go ahead and create your own tic-tac-toe board game. We'll see you next time.